probably linked lists. So in the previous lectures we have been talking about standard linked lists and we came to the conclusion that we have to store a reference to the first node of the data structure. So this is called the head node. And there is a huge problem because, for example, if we have a linked list like this with values 2, 10, minus 2, and 5, and we want to insert a new item, then we have no other option but to start with the first node, and we have to find the end of the linked list, and then we are able to insert the new item. So this is why manipulating the last items of a simple linked list takes ordo and linear running time complexity because first we have to consider all the items one by one in order to find the last node in the linked list. And basically this is exactly why double linked lists came to be. So again, it is a data structure, so the aim is to be able to store items efficiently and to make sure that insertion and removal operations are going to be as fast as possible. So in this case, we store a reference to the head node, so the first node of the data structure. This is what we have seen when dealing with linked lists. But it is absolutely crucial that we store a reference to the last node of the linked list. This is the so-called tail node. And what's absolutely crucial, that every single node has two references. So a given node is pointing to the next node and there is another reference to the previous node. So this is why the previous node of the head node is a null and of course the next node of the tail node is a null pointer again. And otherwise every single node keeps a reference to the previous node and keeps a reference to the next node in the linked list. This is why it is called double linked list. Every single node in a double linked list has a data. It can be an integer, a floating point number, a string, a custom object. So the same as we have seen with standard linked lists. And every single node has a reference to the next node and to the previous node. So this is why it is called a double linked list, because now we have references to the next node and to the previous node in the linked list. And by the way, this is why double linked lists need even more memory than standard linked lists. But of course, there are several advantages. For example, there is no need for shifting items because we store a reference to the first item and to the last item. So we can manipulate the first items and the last items of the data structures quite fast in order one constant running time complexity. Okay, so for example, if we have a double linked list like this, then the head node is pointing to the first node, the tail node, so the last node is pointing to the last node of the data structure. And if we want to insert, for example, one, we keep inserting it to the end of the data structure. So usually it is the standard double linked list implementation that whenever we insert a new item, then it is going to be the last item of the data structure. But of course, because we keep a reference to the last item, basically we just have to update the references. And this is why manipulating the last item takes ordo one constant running time complexity. Okay, so this is how we can insert items. And of course, we can remove items quite fast from the beginning of the linked list and from the end of the linked list. So this is why manipulating the first and last items of a double linked list takes ordo one constant running time complexity. We can do it extremely fast because of course we have access to the first node, this is the head node, and we have access to the last node of the data structure, the so-called tail node. Okay, so let's talk about the advantages of double linked lists. Because, of course, double linked list is a form of linked list, this is why double linked list has the same advantages as standard linked lists. But, of course, we have some additional advantages. So, because we store references to the head node and to the tail node as well, these nodes can be accessed in order one running time complexity, which means that we can manipulate the first item as well as the last item quite fast. What's extremely crucial, and it is a huge advantage of double linked list, that we can traverse linked list in both directions, from left to right and from right to left. Because of course every single node has a reference to the previous node as well as to the next node, this is why we can start at the tail node and we keep visiting the previous node and the previous node and the previous node until we hit the head node. So this is how we can traverse the double linked list in a backward manner. 
And of course, we can start with the head node and keep visiting the next node until we hit the tail node. This is how we can traverse the double e-link list in a forward manner. So it is a huge advantage of double e-link lists that we can traverse the double e-link list in both directions. And of course, removing a given node is easier because there is a pointer to the previous node as well. So because we have pointers to the previous node and to the next node, this is why updating the references is a bit more easier. But of course, because we store more references, of course we need more memory. So double linked list is more memory heavy than simple linked lists. And it is a bit more complicated to implement double linked list because of course we have to deal with both the pointers as far as the given pointers are concerned. Pointer to the previous node and pointer to the next node. And of course we still haven't solved the main issue how to search for an arbitrary item faster than linear running time complexity. Of course, we can access the first nodes in Ordo 1 constant running time complexity. We can access the last node in Ordo 1 constant running time complexity because we store references to these nodes. But what about arbitrary internal nodes? If we are looking for a given value, we have no other option but to start either with the head node or the tail node and consider all the items until we find the one we are looking for. Unfortunately, it has ordo and linear running time complexity in the first case, so we still haven't solved the main issue how to do better than linear running time complexity for finding arbitrary items. And by the way, this is exactly why in the next chapter we are going to talk about binary search trees. Thanks for watching.